engines on it's a gorgeous day and we are heading down to a place called Purton and there's something really exciting and really special to uncover when we get there so I'm really excited about this so let's cruise we are we are surprisingly facing the wrong way so we do have to turn the boat around I think I'll say that at the beginning of every vlog now but we are going to have to turn the boat around first since we've been on the Gloucester and Sharpness Canal, so many other narrowboaters have said you must stop at Purton. So that's what we're going to do. On we go. comes out in the summer, little Alice. And that's where we were, nestled in the reeds. Grey lag family that nest here along the banks. Apparently, the grey lags haven't nested here before because the swans are really territorial, but in this year, for the first time, they've accepted each other say that but then this cop here doesn't look very happy with this grey lag up here that's his little family so we're at our first bridge If you cross over Five Patch Bridge and follow the road on the right hand side, you come to Slimbridge Wetland Centre, which I'm going to be visiting in a couple of vlogs time. And it's gone green, which is perfect. This is a lovely little cafe and you, you can have a lovely cake there, do lots of different options for all dietary needs. Fish and chips on a Friday, you can have a beer, There's, they serve alcohol as well. And there's a little shop which does some canal based art, some jams, apple juice. It's just a lovely place to stop, the Black Shed Cafe. And I really recommend it. Before it was a cafe and a place to hire a bike, it used to be way back in 1910 a store grain, and that grain was taken off to a mill in the nearby village of Cam. So we're just going to come in towards the water point. That's what we're doing first. Here's an interesting fact, especially if you're a boater. So the Gloucester Sharpness is 16 and a half miles, navigable miles, and in that 16 and a half miles, there's eight water points that I can count on the map, and seven rubbish points. Two places with Elsan and two places with Pump Out. For such a short canal, that is quite impressive. And when you get to the bins, they have dry recycling as well, which is always lovely to see. We decided to only fill the water bottles up because the water pressure is very slow and we'll be here for ages. There's another water point further down because like I said, there's loads of water points here. So we're just filling up our drinking water because we don't drink the water straight from the tank. We have a stainless steel tank, but, you know, we probably could do that. Um, we just fill up separate bottles for now. I do have a water filter, uh, but I need to replace the actual water filter bit. They're expensive. So that's what we're doing. We're filling up our drinking water bottles.
I love boat spotting along this stretch of water. It's amazing. I think I keep saying it. But the boats are so unique and really big and lots of different features to them that you don't normally see on boats along the canals. Some of you have asked us what our summer plans are when we get after we've been to the bottom of the Gloucester and Sharpness Canal. Well, of course, we have to turn and come back round, but we're going to stop off at different mooring spots. I want to go to the Wetland Centre and to explore Slimbridge uh, Nature Reserve. There's so much going on there. I'd love to do a little bit of camera work there. And then, um, of course, we will be heading back towards the River Severn. But when we do that, we are going to go and explore the River Avon. But in between those stops, we're going to have a little look around the Cotswolds. We are going to the Forest of Dean and the Stroud Canal. You can't go there on a narrow boat, but you can visit that on like a boat like Little Alice and we can walk along there. So these are all things that we are going to do in the summer. I hope you're going to join me. It'll be really lonely without you if you don't join me. Bender. It's looking really pretty. And here we've got the water treatment centre which is extracting the water from this canal to make sure that the Bristolians are nicely hydrated. Now the exciting thing to uncover in Perton isn't obvious from the canal, you have to look a little bit deeper. So now that we're in Perton, it's an excellent time to have a little nosy and I thought this evening we could end up at the very special place where there are some very special things to see. <laughs> but first, let's have a look around Perton itself, the little village. I think there's an unusual church there, so we can go and have a look. I'm putting on my shoes, that's why. That's why I'm, well, looking a bit weird. On this past surf. So this morning surf, we're gonna go into the village of Perton, okay? And then this evening, I thought we could take an evening walk around the very special place. Yeah, very special place, surf. I know it's over there, I know. We won't go there yet, we're gonna go to Perton first. Okay, is that a plan? 
We are moored at the end of the visitor moorings and then there's a few more visitor moorings and then beyond that there's some private moorings. It's really lovely. There must be a boat coming. I'm not sure if the church is left or right from here so we're going to plop with right. carry on Zeph, we're not quite there yet. Look at this lovely front garden. Here you go. I think I've come out of Purton, so I might have to check the map. The maps aren't working, it's not a great signal around here, so I'm going to head back along that road and see if I can find the church that way. back to where we almost started. Okay. Oh, there's the church. Oh, okay, I'm gonna have to film it from here. be able to go in but there is a footpath just along the side of it so we can go along there. Footpath. Right let's do this. Do this way. Okay, this is the big picture. We're on a hill that overlooks the church, the octagonal church of Purton, the village of Purton, and then behind you've got the River Severn. I have found a crab spider, and I'm not 100% sure what type of crab spider it is. I'll have to look it up, but it's caught something. And you can see when I show you it, you'll know why it's called a crab spider. You'll definitely know. I can completely see now why other boaters have said you have to stop here. We're at Purton Hulks where you can get up close to ships over 100 years old 
80 of them lie here filled with silt and sunken into the banks to protect the land from erosion. There's an eerie beauty here made even more special by the story plaques which outline each boat's history as you walk along. But far out in the river at low tide, you can see Wasdell H, one of two barges carrying oil that hit the Severn Railway Bridge on a foggy evening in October 1960. Whilst I was filming it, a man and his friend came looking for his friend's dad's memory plaque. Yeah, this and they collided and the oil caught fire and took the bridge out. So I told him that I'd seen the memory plaque and I'm sure there was a name like Dudfield on it, so he went looking for it. Ada, grain carrier, holding up the sides. Edith, coal trader, fighting off the tides. Dispatch, fish ship, long before she sank, sailed the Atlantic, now holds up the bank. Catherine Ellen Schooner, plus 100 tonne, protecting all that knew her in World War I. Harriet of Honey Street, sailed and towed her loading, 70 plus 2 in feet now stops the land's eroding. 81 and more, heavy hulks in clay, silted to the shore, keeping rivers draw at bay. Like a spider crab's claw, clutching dinner tight, each hulk's whole core is to hold with all their might. Greater boatmen grasp, bubbles filled with air, ships' shells clasp to the land they share. As dusk takes hold, on every nail and beam, the sun paints gold, and a ship is seen. Over it flies, but stops and bows, 
where each hulk lies, then off it sails. Mm -hmm.